Hi, welcome to Red Rock Spot. In today's video, we are going to be interacting with Inertia Testnet. Inertia is the first modular lending protocol and LRT on Inertia. We previously did Inertia Testnet and currently we are awaiting our Testnet rewards and we are hoping that both Inertia and Inertia are going to cook. So the first thing that you want to do is to visit Inertia for set. Inertia is the layer one and Inertia is the layer two. So you want to visit Inertia for set and then claim test tokens. However, note that previously in uh, Inertia Testnet, we were connecting with Kepler wallet. But in Inertia Testnet, you want to connect with your EVM wallet. We are not using Kepler this time. Now, after claiming test tokens, we visit app.testnet.inrt.fi. Their landing UI is the landing page. But before we interact with this, we want to click on the sidebar menu. And then click on inrt.fi. On this tab, we want to mint N init and S init. N init, when you mint it, you can use it to farm uh, INRT reward. And S init, when you mint it, you can use it to provide a collateral on the lending page. So we are going to start with N init. You click on mint and then it takes you here where you take init to mint N init. So I am using one init this time to mint an init and it is on a one to one ratio so when you stake one init you are going to receive instantly one n init so i am confirming the transaction in my wallet the minting is successful i will do the same thing for s init as well i'll click on mint i'll choose the amount of init that i want to stake in order to receive s init I will do the same thing. I'll stake one in it and then click on submit. In it and S in it is not on a one to one ratio. So the amount that you get in S in it is always a little bit smaller than the amount of in it that you stake. I have successfully minted both N in it and S in it. Now it is not over yet. I'm going to go to the first one where you see N in it plus INRT, mint and farm, where you see this. I am going to click on the farm button. And on this page, I am going to stake. Remember that when I minted N in it, I staked Inisha. To earn N init. Now I am going to stake the N init that I earned by staking Inisha. I am going to stake it on this page so that I can start earning INRT reward. Make sure that that toggle switch is turned on for maximum reward and then tick that terms of uh, condition and then confirm the transaction in your wallet. So by staking your N in it, you will start earning INRT reward 24 hours later. So we are done with everything on this tab. If you want to see your record of um, what you have minted, you simply tap on that person icon and then you can see your assets. You can also decide to, if you click on manage, you can decide to unstake your N in it at any time or your S in it. But unstaking takes about uh, 25 days. Okay, and we have no reason to unstake. Now I'm going to click on that sidebar menu and then I'm going to click on lending. Now note that everything that we have done so far under INRT.fi happened on layer 1 on Inisha. And everything that you'll be doing on this lending page is going to happen on Inertia layer 2. Let's test that out by clicking on S in it, then let's click on my info. And then let's try to supply S in it. You can see this notification. Your wallet is empty. Please transfer INRT via the bridge. Which means I don't have INRT which is going to be used as gas fee to, compl uh, to complete interactions on layer 2. So how do you have INRT? That is by uh, staking your N in it which I previously did. Even though you can bridge uh, INRT from layer 1, you can swap uh, init or any other token for INRT on layer 1 and then bridge your INRT from layer 1 to layer 2. Although you can do that to speed up things, but 
I did that yesterday and the INRT that I got is useless. So the only way for you to have INRT that you are going to use on the landing page is to stake your N in it and then wait 24 hours later. So what you are seeing right now is 24 hours later, I made sure to mint more uh, N in it and then staked more N in it so that I can earn more INRT reward. And you can see if you click on that hamburger menu, you can see how much I have earned in INRT reward. Although the reward is not yet available for claiming, it turns out it is going to be available for claiming after 48 hours. It is just 24 hours today, so I'll be able to claim uh, INRT rewards starting tomorrow. But what matters for me is the fact that I have earned INRT and I am now good to go with my lending transactions, okay? So I'll click on that sidebar menu and I am going to click on lending. You can actually interact with any of the tokens that are available here, but S in it matters more than any other token, okay? So I am going to stick with using S in it. I'm going to click on detail. I'll click on my info. Now, if you check, you'd see that I do not have S in it balance on layer 2. It is showing zero. But you can see below it that I have uh, 21 S in it on layer 1. And I need to get that balance over to layer 2. So to do that, I'm going to click on transfer. And once you click on transfer, it takes you to the initial bridge. Okay, so I'm going to be choosing in it on initial, sorry, S in it on initial, and I'll be bridging it over to S in it on inertia. So I am simply bridging from layer one to layer two. Now I'm going to bridge everything that I have in S in it. I'll click on confirm and then confirm the transaction in my wallet. To prevent unnecessary going back and forth and stress, I am going to advise that you make sure to have uh, the same amount of S in it that I am using here. That is at least 21. Have at least 21 S in it before you attempt your lending and borrowing. Because if you have less than that, you will be faced with a minimum balance uh, issue and you have to be going back and forth to mean testing it before you do lending so if you want to be able to do everything at a go have at least 21 so i am now supplying my s in it and i am supplying everything that i have i have 21 s in it and i am supplying everything I have successfully supplied uh, S in it into the lending pool. I'll click on my info and I'm going to now borrow. If you check, you'll see that I don't have any balance again. So I'll now click on borrow. As I have supplied, I'm going to borrow. Remember that I supplied 21 S in it. Now I have, um, I am able to borrow up to 17 S in it. If I decide to change that amount and then borrow something lower than that, I won't be able to borrow. I just tried 10. If you check the uh, error at the bottom, it says the amount entered is below the minimum borrow limit. If I decide to add more and then say, let me borrow 15, and I scroll to the bottom, I am still getting the same error. If I decide to borrow 12, I am still getting the same error. So for me to have enough to borrow, I have to borrow everything in my capacity, which is 17 S in it. And if you did not deposit up to 21 S in it, you won't have a borrow amount that is up to 17. So make sure that you have at least 21 S in it before you attempt the lending and borrowing task. I really hope I am able to communicate this part very well. So I'll hit the submit button and then I'll confirm the transaction in my wallet. So I have successfully borrowed as well. If you want to be able to see a list of all the borrowings and lendings that you have done, you can do that by simply clicking on my info and then go to my lending. On this page, you'll be able to track all of the tokens that you have supplied and borrowed as well, as well as the amount of each that you have supplied and borrowed. Previously, I supplied USDC. You can see the amount at the top. And in this video, I did S in it. And if you scroll to the bottom, you also see the ones that you have borrowed. I borrowed USDC as well as borrowed uh, S in it as well. Okay, so since we have repay button, I'm going to be repaying part of my loans 
uh, before the end of this video too, I will click on the repair button. I will start with USDC. I borrowed 10 USDC before. I am going to try and repay half of what I borrowed. I'll hit the submit button and then confirm the transaction in my wallet. I have repaid half of my uh, borrowed USDC and I am going to do the same thing for SINIT which I borrowed in this video. I am going to hit the repay button and then repay like half of what I borrowed as well to maintain uh, good loan health. So I am going to repay let's say 10 SINIT out of the 17 that I borrowed. I will hit the submit button and then confirm the transaction in my wallet. My health factor is pretty good now that I have effectively reduced the amount of loans that I am having. If you check my USDC and SNIT borrowing amount, you see that they have uh, effectively reduced. Now, everything that you do on Inertia Testnet actually comes with points. You earn points for your transactions on Inertia. And if you check that uh, star icon beside the wallet at the top, that is where you see the amount of points that you have earned. So far, I have earned points, INRT.5 points, and those are for the S in it and N in it that I minted and the INRT reward that I have been farming since yesterday. And my lending point is still zero because I, had, I didn't lend anything yesterday. I am just lending today. And it is by tomorrow, from tomorrow onward, that my uh, points will start counting. So by tomorrow, I will start earning points for lending and borrowing as well the inertia test net is not a long-term test net it ends on april 8 and this is how the point system works every point that you earn during the course of this test net is going to be slashed into two 50 percent of your points will be migrated over to mainnet when they launch on mainnet which means you are going to earn rewards for it if you farmed mainnet and 50 percent is going to be rolled over to tge which means whether you are uh, farmed inertia on mainnet or not you are still going to earn rewards for participating in the test net and you end that during tge so that is how it works and this is everything that you need to do on inertia test net i hope that this video have been in one way or another very useful for you in completing your inertia testnet transaction and if you have any question please drop me a comment in the comment section you also find the links that you need in the comment section for your convenience if you have found value in this video if this video have been helpful to you in one way or another please let me know by liking this video and subscribe to my channel for more content like this thank you for watching and i'll see you in another tutorial